Hello, it's Theo from Theo's Tech Tips, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to send messages from one server to another using Redis in Spring Boot. Let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is to make a new project in your IDE. And once you've created your project, the first thing you want to do is to go into your pom.xml file. And we want to add the Spring Boot parent pom right below our version tag. And the next thing we want to do is to make a dependencies tag. And we need the dependencies for Spring Boot starter web. And we also need the Spring Boot starter data redis dependency. So the next thing you want to do is to make a file in resources called application.properties. And the first property that we want to add is server.port. And we're going to set that to 8080. And the next options we need are spring.data.redis.host. And you're going to put in the host of your Redis server. So for me, it's going to be localhost because I'm running my Redis server locally. And the next property we need is spring.data.redis.password. And we can set this to our password. But since I don't have a password for my Redis server, I'm just going to leave it blank. And the next property we need is spring.data.redis.port. And this is the port that our server is running on. And there we go. So the next thing you want to do is to go into our main class. And we want to add the Spring Boot application annotation. And inside of this main method, we're going to call spring application dot run main dot class and args. And this is going to run our Spring Boot application when the app is started up. So the next thing we need to do is to make a new class called controller. And we're going to annotate it with at rest controller. And now we want to add a page to our application that the user can go to to send the message to the rest of the servers. So we can just annotate with get mapping and we'll put a slash for index. And then we will say private string get message page. And we want to return some HTML that will display to the user to enter a message. So to do this, we're going to return and we're going to use three sets of quotes here. And we want to add a form that the user enters in. So we're going to add a form tag and we want to set the method on the form to get. And this will mean that when you submit the form, it will send the form data in get parameters. And now we want to add the input for our user to type the message in. So we can just go input type text and we're going to add name equals message. And we also want to add a label to this input. So we could just go label message slash label. And now we're going to add a few line breaks and we're going to add a submit button that the user can press to send the message. So now what we need to do is to set up our Redis classes to take care of sending and receiving messages. So the first thing we want to do is create a new class called Redis config. And this is going to set up all of the options that we need for Redis. So we can just put a configuration annotation on the class. And the first thing we want to do is configure our container. Because the Redis pub subsystem can listen for many messages from different channels, the container is in charge of actually sending the messages to other clients that are subscribed to the channel. So we're just going to go public Redis message listener container container and it is going to take in the redis connection factory as well as the message listener adapter and we want to set this method as a bean so to add our container the first thing we need to do is to set a variable of type redis message listener container container equals new redis message listener container and now we want to add our connection factory to the container and the connection factory is the component that takes care of establishing connections to the pub subsystem so you can just go container dot set connection factory and connection factory and next we want to set the message listener for our container so you can just go container dot add message listener and we're going to pass in our listener adapter and a new pattern topic of Redis channel. 
So this Redis channel is going to be a bean that we're going to define later on. And we're just setting the channel name so that other clients can go and connect to the Redis channel with that name. And now we can just return the container. So the next bean that we need is our listener adapter. So you can just go bean message listener adapter and Redis receiver. And this Redis receiver class is just a class that we're going to define later on. And we can just return a new message listener adapter receiver. And the listener method is going to be receive message. The next bean that we need is our template. And what this does is it's basically the system that will parse our messages and send them over. So because we are sending our messages as strings, we will be using the string Redis template. So you can just go public string Redis template. And we just need the Redis connection factory. And we're just going to return a new string Redis template and connection factory. And the last bean that we need is a bean that stores the name of our channel. So we could just go at bean Redis channel. And we're just going to return example app. So the next class that we need to add is a class called Redis messaging service. And this class is going to be the class that takes care of sending the messages. So we want to add the components annotation and we need to auto wire our string Redis template. And we also need to auto wire our Redis channel. And now we're just going to add a method called send message. And this is going to take in our message. And to send the message, all we have to do is go Redis template dot convert and send Redis channel and message. And the last class that we need is the class that takes care of receiving the messages. So we're just gonna make a new class called Redis receiver. And we're just gonna add the component annotation. And all we need to do is add a method and it's going to take in string message. And you can do so much with this message, but what we're going to do is we're just going to print this to the console. So you can just go system.out.println got message and we are going to add our message. And the last thing we need to do is to add the logic to actually send the message from the HTML. So you're going to go back into our controller class and we need to auto wire our Redis messaging service. And we can go down to our message page logic and we need to add a request parameter that is optional and it's going to be called message. And the reason we need to do that is because when you submit the form, the way it works is that it will reload the page, but it will add the contents from the message input into the get parameter because we specified method as get, and it will put it into this method parameter. And the reason it needs to not be required is because if you just go to the page to just send something and you don't actually have a message in this parameter because you haven't clicked on submit yet, it's going to just error out. So you need to make it required to false so that the page will actually just display this HTML even if we haven't sent a message. So what we need to do is we need to go if message is not null, then we're going to go Redis messaging service dot send message message. And that's it. So all I need to do is to start my Redis server. And now I need to go into the directory of my project and I'm going to start the application. And there we go. So now I want to add a second application, but first we need to go back into our properties and change the port so that they won't override. So I'm gonna change it to 9090 and I'm going to make a new window here. We're going to go into the folder of our project and we're going to run our project. Okay, so I'm just going to arrange my screen like this and we can just open up our browser. So now I need to go to the home page of our application. So I'm just going to go to localhost 8080 and all we have to do is to input our message and submit and you should see got message high, got message high. And what's interesting is that this server is actually the same server that we sent the message from. And you might be wondering why we got the message on this server, even though that it is the server that we sent it from. 
And the reason is because the way Redis pub sub works is it actually has no idea what server is what. So there's no way to like send a message to the other servers. The way you would do that is to give a unique identifier to all of your servers and you would send that server ID with your message. And then in the receiver, you just check if the current server ID is different from the server ID that was sent. And if it is, then you deal with the message. And if it isn't, you just ignore it. And this will prevent messages from being sent to the same server. That adds quite a little bit of complexity, so I won't cover that in this video. But another cool thing that we can do is to go to the other server, which is localhost 9090, which is this server, and we can send hi from server number two and submit this message. And now it should say hi from server two. So this is a very basic example, but you can use this basic code structure to adapt it to whatever situation that you need. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. I'm Theo from Theo's Tech Tips, and I'll see you next time. Bye.